All right, a little after two as we uh, move on on this Thursday program, the seventh day of December. David Stern a little later on, Brian Billick, as we begin the week, believe it or not, uh, all the way already. I mean, you know, think about think about how fast the season goes. I mean, it is remarkable. There's nothing like it, how, how it just it is amazing, amazing how quickly we just bolt in the NFL. I mean, here we are in week 14. You know, uh, you know, we've got 12 games under everybody's belt. Amazing what's going on. Paul and Colts, Nick, what's up, Paul? Hey, Mike, how you doing? First Good. time, long time. What's happening? Uh, not a whole lot. You know, I had the pleasure of meeting you a number of years ago at a due process stables through a mutual friend of ours, John Parada. Oh, John Parada is a good friend of mine. Absolutely. Uh, the guy who uh, built due process uh, for Mr. Brennan and the uh, guy I owned horses with. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was wondering, do you keep touch with him? And do you I haven't yourself- seen John recently. I have not. I have not. I mean, he sent, I've, he sent me a couple of texts, and uh, but I haven't seen him in a, probably uh, probably two years or so. I haven't seen him. You don't. You don't imagine yourself ever going down the route that he went, where you kind of talk ponies on a regular basis. Over no, the- no. And listen, I, it's a it's a hobby for me. Um, okay. You know, I don't see myself doing it. I mean, I I love it, but I don't see myself doing it with that kind of regularity. No. Right, and never writing books or anything on it. No, right? you know, I, I, I've been offered a bunch of times. To, there's, first of all, there's people who are better versed in writing books about the thoroughbred than I am. Uh, number two, uh, uh, I've been offered a couple of chances to do a book. Uh, this past year I came very close, and then I, I passed only because of the amount of work there was in it and the amount of promotional work you have to do afterwards to justify the advance they give you. You have to do so many appearances that it just I, I just didn't see how I was going to have time to do it this year. The, it, the appearances were all going to be this, this fall, and I just didn't think with everything else going on uh, in this last year. We were going to do a book about the, about about the last year, and we talked about it. We had it mapped out. I was very close to saying yes, and then I said no just because the amount of appearances was just overwhelming. I just didn't think I could commit to it. Uh, that was really why I didn't do it, but they, people were great. I mean, they, we had some pretty interesting ideas. It was really, uh, I think it would have been really well received, but I just, it really was what came after the book that was the biggest issue. Scott in East Town over. What's up, Scott? Hey, Mike. Uh, how are you today? Good, what's I'm happening? Hey, buddy. Calling for two reasons. One, if I don't get a chance to say goodbye to you, you are an original. That, uh, you know, goes without saying. And um, thank you for the year. Thank you. And I want to talk to you about Eli. You know, Mike, this guy here, you know, I'm a big uh, big fan of his. And uh, from day one, with the pedigree he had, I was behind him, and I still am. You know, this guy is, is the people you grew up with, Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, you know, little boys looking up to these guys, and, you know, as good as he gets with Eli, uh, from a family perspective and, and, and everything else. And, you know, my prayer is that he comes back next year and finishes out his career with the Giants and they fix this offensive line. Because, Mike, if you bring in another quarterback, what do you do with Beckham, Shepard, the tight end? These guys aren't going to wait around four or five years for more growth. It doesn't work I mean, that way. It, in this league now, it doesn't work this way. Look at these young quarterbacks. Look now. Look at the Rams. Look at the Eagles. These quarterbacks are in their second year. They have nine wins and ten wins. They're right now playoff, deep playoff teams in the NFC. These quarterbacks now come in and play immediately. It's what they do. Because the way it works, you can't keep a veteran guy and a high draft pick on the team. It just doesn't work that way economically anymore. So you're not going to have a guy making $20 million and then bring in a number one draft pick and have him involved. It's not going to work that way. They just don't have the ability to do that anymore. So these guys are going to play. And look, look where Philly is. Their quarterback's in the second-year player. Look where, you know, Luck was in the playoffs right away. I mean, uh, look where he is. Look where uh, the Rams are. I mean, these guys, they expect them to come in. They expect them to play. And they expect them to just, you know, have an impact right away. So if the Giants take a guy, remember, they played Eli the first year. He didn't win the first year. But he got his his teeth wet. And it's a different league than even it was then. Now they expect these guys to come in and play right away. When you pick the, the guys at the top of the draft. Jerry in Manalapin. What's up, Jerry? Hey, Mike. Uh, first, I want to say I've been listening to you since you came on the air. About, I'm about your age. And my, am I correct? The first big story you guys broke was when Barchi Amati died. That was me. Um, 
Uh, yeah, that was me. I, that we weren't even together yet when that happened. Uh, but yes, that was a big one that I broke. I was it was an afternoon drive, and I got the kid to go to the court the, to the uh, village hall, mm-hmm. and he re- read the the announcement from them, and that was the that was the story being broken, yeah. and it was picked up everywhere. That's yeah, true. Like, and, and that it was like thirty was, years yeah, ago. Yes, yes and that's I remember true. where I was yeah. driving exactly what yes, street. And, and I was did. filling in. I wasn't even my show yet. I was really? filling in for Pete Franklin when that happened. Yes. Wow, that's how far back we go. But yeah, I'm going to talk to you. you know, I, I like I said, I'm your age. I've been watching right. basketball forever. Right. In my opinion, the five best non-centers ever in order would be Michael Jordan, LeBron, Oscar, Jerry West, and Elgin Baylor. I mean, it's, it'd be a hard. I mean, there are guys that you would. I mean, people would. No one would argue, obviously, with Michael or LeBron mm-hmm. at, at all. Uh, I don't think anybody who knows basketball would ever argue with Oscar. Right. Um, I think the other two are where you're going to get arguments and you're going to hear names like uh, Bird and Magic in there uh, with that group. Guys like that, and I think otherwise. I mean, I would. I have no problem with e- either one of them. I think people don't understand how good Elgin Baylor was. Yes. And Jerry West <laughs> Jerry, played much better defense. Than Jerry was a Johnson great. Did. You can't be a better player. Nope. Here's what I'll say about Jerry West: You can't be a better basketball player than Jerry West. You can't. Yep. It just this on he either end of the long arms yes, to on play either defense. end of the floor, shooting, clutch, yep. defense, anything. You can't be better. You cannot be better at basketball than Jerry West. Maybe you can be as good. You cannot be better. And he was as clutch as any player ever. And he was utterly brilliant. And Elgin Baylor is incredibly underrated, probably the most underrated. I think the two most underrated players in the history of the league are Elgin Baylor and John Havlicek. I think they are guys who have been lost in the seams of this because Bird and Magic came in, and, they, and, and this was really stern. This was really what happened. They revitalized the league. They breathed life into the league. You know, Michael didn't rebuild the NBA. He took it to another level. But the league was transfixed and transformed by Bird and Magic. They took it from the college game. They took leadership. They took passing. They took teamwork. And they took the Celtics and the Lakers back to what they were, doubleheaders every Sunday, Celtics on, Lakers on, bing, bing. And then those two, remember, when they started, when Magic won the championship his first year, that game was on tape delay that night. When he's had the breakout game in game six, that game was on tape delay. That's how bad the NBA was then. They didn't even get their finals on live. So he transformed, and it was David Stern that did that, and he utilized the, the presence, the popularity, and the way they brought the pass and they brought teamwork back to the league. Because the league had become a league of George, and I don't want to knock guys like George Gervin, but the league had become Julius and George Gervin and one-on-one and scoring, and, and then the bird and magic changed all that completely. Plus, they did it to the Lakers and the Celtics. And then you had the next was, of course, here came the legend of Michael Jordan right behind them. But... It was those two that changed the league. That's why those two are so fondly remembered. And then the guys before them, like a Havlicek, Elgin Baylor, have gotten lost in the shuffle. But they were in. You look at Elgin Baylor's years. Elgin Baylor has years where you're talking about a forward who would be 31 and 18 for the season. 31 and 18. I mean, stuff like that. I mean, numbers like that every year. Ken in the Bronx, what's up, Ken? Good afternoon, Mike. How are you doing? What's happening? Yeah, I want to say something to you. Um, ever since I've been listening to you, um, I learned so much about American sports. Thank you. Know. you. Came here from Jamaica and didn't know much about American sports, you know, besides soccer. But Well, you can help me with that because I don't know anything about <laughs> soccer. <laughs> but I learned so much by listening to the fans, especially you and Joe. And I want to say... I always look forward whenever anything break, any news break in the sports. I always listen to your your opinion. Well, thank you. Because your your opinion always means a lot to me, and I'm gonna miss thank that. Thank you very much. And I hope wherever you go, we could still hear your voice. 
Thank you. You know, I hope you could do that so we could still hear your voice and you get your opinion and stuff like that. Thank you. And, you know, and, and whatever you do, I wish you all the best. Thanks you're again. One, you are one of the greatest. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ken. Thank you for the very and kind word. Oh, sorry. I thought he was done. You're going to say more nice things. I would have stayed. I'm sorry. I uh, apologize. Iron Staten Island. What's up, Iron? Hey, what's up, Mike? How what's up, Iron? What's happening? Hey, yeah, nothing much. So, you, listen, you know what? You're going out to Denver this week. Team that just lost seven or eight in a row. Um, you got to go out there just to play a better ball. It's still tough to play out there. It's always tough to play a team that just lost seven games in a row. You can't let Von Miller wreck this game, and he's very capable of doing that. So, you know, you go out there, play it close to the best, try to establish the running game. And I, I think, you know, they, they go out there. We, we win this game out in Denver. Uh, this, is, this is a big step for them, you know, to, to beat the Chiefs and Bron- Oops. You know, it would be, it's, it's, it's not easy to do. It, it, I mean, right, but that team is dead right now. They're dead. So you should beat them. I understand that their defense can step up one week. I understand what you're saying about Vaughn. Uh, but right now, the Jets are going out there. They're cohesive. They have a little pep in their step. They feel like they're accomplishing something. Uh, Denver is a dead piece right now. You know, that's a team that has completely just doesn't know one end from the other, has cashed it in, doesn't have offensive things together, doesn't have the quarterback position down. I mean, so that's why you're getting what you're getting. And that effort last week in Miami was just awful. Absolutely awful. So, uh, I mean, that coach is going to get fired. That's, that, you know, he's just going to, it's going to look like just a mistake. That's it. That's how bad it is. David on Long Island. What's up, David? How you doing, Mike? What's happening? Good. A couple of things over here. First of all, Todd Bowles. I think he's doing a, a, a sensational job. He has. I wouldn't call hard. it sensational. I think he's doing a. I think this year he's doing a fine job, and he's definitely a guy to keep. I, I wouldn't. I, I'd be a little less than sensational. They've had too many dumb plays in the fourth quarter to call it sensational. Now, one question on David Stern. I know you're having him on later for the yes. interview. I'm actually looking looking forward to it. Yes. What is your thoughts? I think he's done a pretty good job. He's definitely taken the NBA into the digital age. I just want to get your thoughts on what you think he, his full body of work. I think he was a terrific, uh, absolutely terrific commissioner. I think he's one of the smartest commissioners we've ever had. I think the guy did an incredible job breathing life into the NBA. Abs- absolutely incredible. He understood how to market it. Uh, he understood how to modernize it. He also led with an iron fist, which is what that league needed. I think he did a, a sensational job. I really did. I think he was yeah. one of those, and he's one of the smartest guys to ever come on the show as a, to be interviewed. One, absolutely one of the shrewdest, one of the smartest, and one of the best interviews because he was always, you know, curmudgeonly and cantankerous, and that's what he brought to the show. And he's, he's a very, very bright guy. Uh, yeah, I think he, I think his, he, I think the mark he left was uh, terrific. I think the guy he groomed in. And, uh, Adam to become the commissioner was also is doing I think all of it and you know Bettman was his guy remember he look, look where how long his tentacles are Adam's his guy Gary Bettman's his guy Bettman's running the NHL all these years Adam's now running the NBA I mean that's all stern so I think he's been one of the really smart you know we've, we've been blessed with some very smart commissioners uh, none smarter than Roselle and Stern uh, I think they are absolutely special commissioners Here's Erica. 